Hey folks, Fernando doing another video for Demon Survivalist and continuing with the topic of the invasion of Ukraine by Russia. Now, of course, the focus here is the horror that Ukrainians are suffering right now. There's also something that has to be said because I try to keep things in perspective and you know, analyze every survival uh, situation accordingly. So one of the things we also have to understand that people in Russia, man, are not going to be having a good time. They're going to be going through some horrible uh, living conditions themselves. Of course, nothing like being bombed by uh, Russia, but you're looking at a country that's going to be falling in ways that I, I don't know if they quite understand. I, I see that there's a, a generation of younger people that got used to living in somewhat of a more uh, uh, you know, westernized way, enjoying certain freedoms and rights. These are very quickly disappearing. Now, this is very interesting from my perspective of, of analyzing things in terms of survival and preparedness because when I wrote uh, Bugging Out and Relocating, which, yes, of course, promotion time over there. You have the links there below. But when I wrote this book, I did a lot of research and you end up understanding certain things such as how... Uh, escaping from a country, bugging out, or, you know, uh, moving away from uh, potential threats. Maybe a matter of seconds, maybe a matter of minutes, hours, days, months, or years. That's how I explain it in the book after analyzing and understanding different events. You see right now this unfolding right in front of our eyes. So on one hand, we have the people from uh, Ukraine that have been, you know, at risk from Russia for a very long time. I mean, they've always known that Russia could come after them eventually. I mean, that's why most of these countries, you know, and it's a topic we've talked about before, why is it that all of these countries are so desperate to join NATO? Because that gives you a, a layer of protection. It was created specifically to defend your country from the aggression from Russia. And that's exactly what it's been doing so far. This is exactly why Ukraine, not being a member of NATO, has been selected for invasion and appropriation by dictator Vladimir Putin. So, this doesn't mean that people in Russia are going to be having a great time either, because what you're seeing is an escalated... Um, loss of freedom and liberty in Russia as well and declining living conditions. So on one hand, people in Ukraine knew this could happen. There was always a threat. I did a video in 2014 when Russia first invaded Ukraine in the eastern region when they annexed um, the, the Crimea uh, Peninsula. I, I, you know, it was very interesting to see that as well. Um, I don't know if you follow it or not, but I did. I sure did. And I remember when the first few men were invading from Russia, they, they actually stopped because the people from, from Ukraine right there in the border were, what are you doing, man? You're, you're really coming to our country. You're attacking us. There was some very interesting footage of those first guys crossing over the, the border and finding themselves face to face with their, with their neighbors. And, and the Ukrainian people were telling them, you know, Let's stop this. And I, I think they even hugged it out and they went back to their respective countries. Of course, then the dictator did its thing and it, you know, the invasion went on. But this has been going on for a long time. And my advice back then was, of course, move away from, from that region because it is going to be, you know, in a at a very delicate uh, you know, situation for a very long time from that moment on. And the more things evolved, the more it was obvious that staying in the region or even staying in the country was probably not a great idea. Now, of course, this has nothing to do with going back to your country and fighting or even staying as people have to do now. 18 to 60, you have to, males, you know, it's interesting how all the gender bullshit disappears very quickly when you have to stay and fight for your country, right? So it, it's not about identifying as a man or a woman. If you're a man or a woman, bullshit goes out the window very fast, then you have to stay and fight. Um, and this does not change that your people, your family, you don't want them there. So you had probably years 
to leave Ukraine. If you didn't do that in time, you're now doing it in a hurry. This is like, you know, when I've talked about the situation in Venezuela or the situation in my own country, Argentina, where you've seen a slow decline until it reaches a point where, man, this is, I'm really going to be living this way forever from now on. You know, that is um, the, the kind of, of thing you're facing. Now, on the other side of, of the equation here, in terms of Russia, this is something that caught them a little bit more kind of by surprise. I mean, did you want to live in Russia? Do you think it's a good idea to live under uh, a dictator like Vladimir Putin, which in spite of all his great and very expensive, I assume, PR, he is still a dictator. He's been in power for over 20 years. He's now invading a peaceful foreign nation. So this should not be all that much of a surprise. Maybe we can be surprised of how brutal and extensive that invasion is. But we've always known that the man is a dictator and that living in Russia means you're living under those conditions. And some people may be okay with that. Some companies like Coca-Cola are okay with that, like companies like Ikea or Shell even, which would not be exactly a, a moral uh, you know, standard to uh, abide by. But even those companies are turning away. Coca-Cola is saying, no, I'm okay with dictators and murderers. That's just fine. But the people in Russia are also going to be suffering this. You're going to be suffering if you're watching this from Russia. You know, hopefully you still can do this. But if you're watching this from Russia, it's even less freedom than before. It's even more oppression than before. And the economy is going to be crap. This does not mean that Vladimir Putin is going to be running out of money because the West still finances his war through the purchase of billions of, of dollars each day of energy through the pipeline for Europe, for gasoline, oil. I mean, the West is still financing all of this in spite of trying to save face with, we're sending a few weapons over there. But this is not going to be ending anytime soon, especially because the Ukrainian people don't want to be Russian. They just want to fight and save their country and their, their homes, which is perfectly understandable. So this is something that, and also understand these things last years if not decades you're looking at something that's not going to be going away anytime soon most of all most tragically for the ukrainian people but for you guys in russia it's not going to be any kind of walk in the park so the economy is already tanking in in russia it, it's lost like 40 percent of its value half of its value depending on how you you see this but the economy is definitely tanking with the sanctions imposed which are not really going after the root cause and the root financing of the war which is energy it is still hitting you know the average people which is perfectly fine you have to do absolutely everything you can against um regime like Russia that is going after um, uh, other countries. So this is absolutely uh, correct to do, but it's going to be having consequences for the Russian people. And this means that you're going to be seeing a huge decline in your quality of life in Russia. Your economy is going to be crap. It's going to be lack of, of importations. There's already problems with parts not no longer being imported. Uh, companies boycotting you and damn, the entire world just hating your guts. Because at the end of the day, this is kind of like when in World War II, you look at Germany and it was, sure, are there people that oppose the regime and and are protesting? Of course they are. And they're being arrested. You know, not unlike Canada, where this also, you know, is happening. And we look at it and we condemn that as well. You know, authoritarianism is wrong if it's in Canada, is wrong if it's in, in the United States, in any other country. We always condemn that at least you know those of us like-minded people that appreciate freedom and liberty but in the case of russia you're gonna be seeing it, it to extremes that you may not see in other places um, vladimir putin is not just gonna be seizing your account and throwing you in, in jail and threatening to murder your dog he's gonna be throwing you in jail for 20 years for protesting against the war without freedom of, of of expression of liberty which we all suffer quite a bit of that lack of freedom of of expression it is you know times a thousand over in russia you're gonna be you're going you're going back to those horrible days of a absolute totalitarian regime in russia it's gonna be closing to the point where you'll not be allowed to leave anymore russia because there's gonna be so many people wanting to leave russia what dictators do and we have history teaching this history teaches us that dictators 
close the doors through one mechanism or another, but you're barred, you're banned from leaving that country when it's falling apart, right? And I mean, even even in Ukraine, if you're from 18 to 60, you're a man, you cannot leave the country, of course. Case of women and children and people that are not within those age, those age groups, you can leave. But in the case of Russia, it's not that you're 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 staying to save your your nation from a from a foreign attack. It's because we're turning this place into a damn horrible dictatorship, and we don't want people leaving the ship as it sinks. Okay, and it is sinking. You know, they, they may be bombing Ukraine, but it is a sinking ship. When when you go this. It, mad for power like Putin is with this delusion of rebuilding the, the Soviet empire. Um, people, I mean, you may win here and there, but eventually you're still a damn loser. You're still someone that is trying to impose uh, something through force directly on your own population. And it never really has good results. Um, going back to that kind of extreme authoritarian regimes means that people in Russia are going to be seeing a huge decline in their, in their quality of life and you know all sorts of, of freedom and economic restrictions like uh, I guess that like this new generation never thought they see and I was just watching that you know some of the younger people talking about how this is something they um, they, they they never thought they see they they were getting used to you know being more of a a, a westernized country in terms of you know the, the things they could enjoy the stuff that was available to them you know I, I was seeing some young Russians complaining that they don't have the Apple app anymore right that's the kind of thing that they uh, took as you know something as a giving and now it's being taken away from them and they find themselves falling back into this gray, horrible, depressing uh, Soviet Union kind of living conditions. Anyway, guys, if you're in Russia, you have a very limited window to leave. You already lost 40% of your savings through this uh, collapse of, of, the, of, the, of, of the local currency, the ruble, and it's only going to be getting worse. And then you have the sanctions, the bans on leaving, and even economically, it's going to be a lot more difficult. Socially, it's going to be a lot more difficult for you to leave in terms of, yeah, I'm a Russian. Okay, yeah, we don't like Russians here anymore. Yeah, you know what? We actually hate your guts. This is something that's going to be more and more common for people to uh, face. Guys, that's going to be all for now. Remember, if you want to prepare for this sort of thing, this would be uh, right there, the book I recommend for the practical aspect of survival and preparedness and for the inflation, economic collapse aspect of all of that, Modern Survival Manual, Surviving the Economic Collapse. Guys, see you in our next video. Take care.